A few years ago, my old man retired, and pretty much ever since then, all he's been doing is windsurfing. It's a pretty silly sport that requires a lot of gear, and as of now, they've just been carrying it and pulling it on homemade carts. But we live in a modern world, and modern problems require modern solutions. So join me as I build him a completely overkill electric cart to carry his gear. My first thought was that I wanted to try to make a tank style treaded cart that would be able to easily drive over any surface. In previous iterations of his own cart that's just manually pulled, he used a PVC frame for the entire thing and it seemed to work pretty good. So I thought that I would try that to start with. So I designed the frame, I designed the suspension components, and I designed all the other mechanical bits and got to trying to produce this idea. Since I'd never designed tracks before, this was definitely a big learning experience. So I tried to cut the gears out of acrylic and then I 3D printed each of the track sections and joined them with an M3 uh, bolt. Once I had a track section, it was time to assemble the little section of frame that I wanted to use to mount the single track. And of course, I also had to make some shafts for all the mechanical components. Then it was time to assemble it and see how it worked. And the short answer was that it didn't. Uh, consistently, the tracks would bind up and then break. So I tried a few different track designs and spent about two months trying to tweak it and get it to work, but I never really got it to work. So I abandoned that idea as quick as I came up with it. And my second idea was to go with just wheels and pulleys. So I 3D printed a pulley set, uh, 3D printed some belts at a TPU, and made new motor mounts, and then I also switched to an aluminum extrusion frame to make everything a lot stiffer, because I found that the PVC pipe <laughs> wasn't the best solution. And I went with casters on the front and then differential steering between the two motors on the back. So once I spent a little while doing some assembly, we were ready for the first test. And for this, it was very simple. Uh, all we had was a single ESC powering both motors, so I had no steering. I just wanted to see how it would work in the grass. Always. Hey, yeah. <laughs> hey. I have no steering input, but... <laughs> this is about how much I'd expect all of his gear to weigh. Let's see if we can make any progress. Yeah, move it. <laughs> yeah. So at the time, I felt like this was going to work. I was actually pretty excited about this test. Later on, I learned that he was going to load it with about 100 pounds of weight, not 20. So <laughs> this solution was probably never going to work. But regardless, I continued to try to sort of iterate and get this to be the best that I could get it to be. She goes pretty good. Unfortunately, a few days after I did this, my shelf that was holding the 3D printed boat that I spent months on fell and absolutely deleted both the boat and the frame of the cart all at once. Now, I'm not going to lie. This took the wind out of my sails for like three months. I just wasn't feeling like doing any projects, hence the massive gap between the last project and this project. But regardless, eventually I got back to it and I ended up making the wheels a lot larger so that I could accommodate bigger pulleys. During my huge wait, I finally got the two separate ESCs that could also run up to 20 volts. And then I also got a new receiver and transmitter that could do differential steering so that I could actually drive the thing around and steer it around corners. Still winter out, but snapped some skis on there. So, as you can probably see, both the back wheels were cambered down and we barely had enough torque to even drive this 20 pounds of weight around. Um, the belts were pretty much constantly slipping and I was pretty unhappy with this result. So it was time to go back to the drawing board. Uh, version number three at this point. 
but I was going to change over to some gears and beef up the entire frame. Once everything was printed out and I assembled it, I was pretty satisfied with the improvement. So you can see that the right side has a lot less deflection than the old design. Um, and that's simply because I added another support on the outside. So I was pretty satisfied with this and outfitted the entire thing with this type of drive. So clearly this was a huge improvement, but can it move any weight? That was the next question. So to answer that, I loaded 70 pounds on it. And as you can probably hear, we did not have enough power. So of course I just increased the number of gear teeth. Seems like an easy solution, right? which certainly gave me more torque because with me holding onto the cart, you can see how much earlier the wheel spin starts on the left wheel. With this new gear ratio, I was able to drive around fairly comfortably with 35 pounds on the back of the cart. So I thought I should add some more weight. Seventy pounds. So definitely a little bit less comfortable, but it still moves. Yeah, let's try a beefier battery. So I got more power for sure with this battery, just because it's a 5 amp hour and it's got more cells in it. So te technically, that's 70 pounds. Ah! Woo! Those motors are getting toasty. So at this point, I pretty much knew I was going to have to increase that gear ratio even more. But since it was still low and it was pretty fast, I thought I should go give it a top speed run. And as it turns out, driving and trying to use the speed gun at the same time was actually really difficult. Oh. Oops. <clears throat> so with three wheels on my wagon, I tried one more time. But it seemed to be even more uncontrollable. Who would have thought? And I never ended up getting that top speed run that day. But my okay, guess would be it's somewhere around 25 to 30 miles okay, per yeah, hour. Top speed. Oh no! <laughs> I think I found a weak point in my design. Oh, another one. I wonder if it has enough torque to drive like this. I just made it dirty. So to add more gear reduction, I added a second stage and I had to print out a bunch of parts. So once I got those printed, I assembled the cart with the two stage gear reduction. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> that looks like that. This side needs to be adjusted in a bit. Once I adjusted the gear mesh, we were good to go with testing some heavier weight. 70!
So now mechanically, I seem to have enough power, but traction was now our limiting issue. I would just get wheel spin, especially when I would try to start and one of the wheels would spin if it wasn't going in a straight line. So my natural solution was to go to four wheel drive. So I printed out a new set of wheels and a new set of drive hardware, and then I reassembled the entire frame. Which of course then after that I had to wire in the motors and I elected to just wire them in parallel with the uh, original motors. Once I was done that we were good to go for a test. And now it really behaved like a little tank. And it now had enough torque for me to ride. Well, almost. Yeah, so we are still shedding teeth. See, see there's no, <laughs> no teeth there at all. So even though it passed the ride-on test, it would only pass the ride-on test in a straight line. The second that you tried to turn, any misalignment in the gear mesh would cause the teeth to slip. So I was pretty much done with this external gearing design. So I decided I was going to design a planetary gearbox instead. That will have to come in the next video where I will be designing, iterating, and testing the planetary gearbox design until I find a robust solution. It has been a year and a half since I've gotten a video out, so I figured I would put this one out in two parts. Also included in that is going to be my new toys. I finally got a 3D printer that works, and also I managed to finally get myself a metal lathe, so we'll be able to make some more precision parts. And of course, I will also be including the finishing process of the cart, getting it all ready to go over to my dad. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.